Sup and good day, gamers. A formal bust here with Colot. Uh, K H O L A T. This uh, first impression of it, at the very least. But first, we have our sponsor: H two O dihydrogen monoxide, agua, water. Drink it up or die. Staying hydrated, gamers. Now let's get into this. Colot. Again, sorry if I'm mispronouncing that. Uh, this was, game was released back in June of 2015. It was developed and published by capital I, capital M, capital G, capital N, dot, capital P, capital R, capital O. Uh, they're a group of, I believe, indie devs uh, who collaborate and everything, so very nice to see. Uh, and they have some other games out as well. Its description on Steam is the most terrifying journey of your life set in the beautiful winter scenery of the Earl Mountains. Uncover the horrific mi mystery behind the Dyatlov Pass incident, narrated by the famous Sean Bean. Let's hope they didn't blow their whole budget on that actor right there. Uh, Dyatlov Pass incident was an incident, I believe, where some college uh, skiers or hikers... Some college students uh, went up went up the mountain and uh, were found dead, like, you know, a couple days later. So, no one really knows what happened, but was not uh, very nice. Uh, so, uh, yeah. But this is a work of fiction based off of that uh, story. Since, you know, no one knows exactly how they died. Uh, it re this game currently and at normal price retails for 19.99 United States dollars. And it is uh, tagged on Steam as a horror, atmospheric, walking sim, and an indie game. Indie game is not a game tag, but whatever, Steam, you, you sort how you want. Alright, so first impression we got, pretty simple, new game options, credits, and quit. So let's check out options, game options, can show my crosshair, nice, camera movement, I'm gonna keep it on... Gonna keep it on low, so we're not popping around too much. Field of view, 7100, that's nice. Uh, smooth frame rate, gonna keep that off. Frame rate cap, yes, yes, yes. Uh, language, so, okay, nice. Okay, don't like how it, yeah. This is why you have drop-down menus, people. So I can show the gamers what languages a game comes in without having to tab through and change the text uh, font height. It really only does it for French and Espanol, though, but whatever. Uh, so lots of, uh, text languages, what about... Okay, well. They only paid for two voice actors, or two sets of voice actors. English and, uh... I, I wonder. I wonder if Sean Bean did the, uh, both versions, or if he just did the, uh, uh, English. Uh, interesting to know. And subtitles, we're gonna keep those on. And calibrate brightness, of course, in a horror game important. Okay, I can barely see the... I guess it's, a uh, deer head or whatever. Uh, video settings... Uh, we got full screen, borderless, and windowed. Nice to see. Plenty of resolutions. Uh, oh gosh, oh gosh. We'll just... Nice to see when you go back. It asks if you want to save. I do not. Motion blur amount. I want that at zero. <laughs> and vertical sync. Let's get that on. Resolution scale 100. And you can go up to 150. Let's just, just see what that looks like. And advanced video. Okay, so we got everything on maximum. Nice to see. Is there any of this that I want off, though? No, that should all be fine. Alright, apply those changes and uh, back up. Audio. Okay, well, at least we have the different sliders. That's good to see. Uh, controls. Uh, okay, so gamepad is supported. Uh, let's see if they have... Okay, so they do have some different presets. That's nice to see on gamepads, of course. Looks like it's set up. Hmm. Yeah, it looks like it's set up for an Xbox controller, is what it is set up for the gamepad. Do not know if PlayStation works with it or not. Uh, Dead Zone. No, we don't want this. This is all controller, uh, gamepad stuff. Keyboard and mouse, what do we got? Uh, invert? Nope. Look sensitivity, that's fine. Mouse smoothing, I want that off. Key bindings? I mean, it's a walking sim. <laughs> yeah. You got your movement, use, crouch, run, uh, zoom, right mouse button, map, map, compass is compass, flashlight is F, turn, okay. Very limited controls. Walking sim, of course. Alright, 
we spent enough time here. Let's uh, get into the game. Drink some H2O while we're waiting. Excuse me. Fifty-six years ago, Russia, the northern Ural Mountains, a group of nine students of the Ural Polytechnic Institute embarked upon a difficult winter expedition to reach the Otorten Mountain. Their journey seemed to progress according to plan. However, on the seventh day of their trip, the weather conditions worsened. They lost their orientation and were forced to set up a camp on the slope of the mountain called Kolat Siakl. It was their last stop. Three weeks later in Yekaterinburg, when their families received no word of their success, the first rescue expeditions were sent. On February 25th, 1959, an abandoned encampment was found. The tent was torn down and covered with snow, with all the group's belongings left inside. Further examination revealed it was cut from inside out. The surrounding footprints indicated the crew had fled the tent. They were barefooted. This suggests a frantic escape, characteristic of people scared out of their wits. Two sets of prints led to a forested area down the slope. The rescue team found an improvised fireplace and two bodies. They were lying in but their underwear, with cuts and scratches to their limbs, suggesting they had tried to climb the tree in panic. What could terrify them so much? The next three bodies were found scattered a few hundred meters from the first discovery. One of them had suffered a fractured skull, this despite no evidence of a struggle. It took the spring thaw, two months later, to enable the rescue team to find the rest of the victims. The last four skiers were found buried in a thick layer of ice and snow. Their autopsies led to even more bizarre findings. All of the bodies had severe internal injuries caused by an undetermined force, similar to that of a serious car accident. No external damage nor bruises were visible, besides a tongue ripped from one victim's mouth and a strange orange skin color. Much speculation arose from these puzzling events. Such theories included attack from the local tribesmen from an avalanche or animals. Each theory, however, only served to create more questions. The truth behind this tragic course of events remains unexplained to this day. What really happened? Maybe the answer still waits to be discovered deep under the snow. Okay, so as far as I'm aware, that's pretty much the accurate, like, that's pretty much the story. <laughs> pretty accurate. Oh, wow, wow. This actually looks very nice. Okay, you want me to go that way? Probably I am not. Uh, can I pull up map? I can't pull up map. I can't pull up a uh, compass. Flat. Nope, all right, I can't pull up anything yet. Okay. Looks quite nice for a walking sim. Oh my god, the, the god rays! Hmm. This, uh... Oh, no jump in the game, okay. Kind of quite like the vocals and the audio right now, though. Okay. So, walking sim. Got a road here, goes nowhere. I guess this is, uh... It's all abandoned, it looks like. Interestingly, you, you would think if they would, you know, drop me off in town, you know, there'd be people, but it's a walking sim, so you can't have any people around, I guess. That would be a walking and talking sim. So I assume we arrived here by train. Can't interact with a train. So knowing that I can't jump, <laughs> we, we know where I'm limited to. Oh! That was a pretty bad stutter. Gosh. God raise y'all. You need them, right? Oh. 
I guess it's just meant to walk and walk and walk. Okay. But see if I yeah yeah the narrative dissonance of course yeah why would I, why would I walk into the wilderness when I'm in a perfectly good sheltered town here? I mean, granted, I probably can't get in any of them because there's fences around them, but, you know. I mean, can I open this gate? No. Okay. So, no story on what character I am. Um, I just am here to investigate. I'm gonna follow the tracks, think they'll be easier to follow than a uh, road of any sort. Hmm, nice infrastructure here. Electric, electric trains it looks like, so you know. Very eco-friendly, depending on what's generating the power for the electric trains. Probably a giant nuclear reactor, who knows. Okay, into the line here. And I can't go that way. Okay, well, this train looks like it's been here for a while, though. It's covered in ice. Yeah, end of the tracks. My brilliant plan to follow the tracks has been foiled. Okay, at least I still have somewhat of a pathway here. And we're getting very cloudy and dark very quickly. I can understand why the god, ray god rays were so bright early. Okay, so that's that way. This is probably back toward town, that road I was not wanting to take. Sorry, I just can't leave the town without making sure I've gotten, you know, make, make sure there's nothing of import along this road. This is why completionists hate walking sims, because they always give you different paths to walk on. As a completionist, let's check them all. Okay, yeah. Okay, so buildings so far look like set dressing, which makes sense if most of this game's supposed to take place, you know, as you're walking up a mountain. So, let's let's go with game. Walk up, walk up a mountain. But yeah, so far I have no motivation other than see see what's what in in this creepy mountain where these, you know, freak accident where these uh, college students died. You know, all good. Oh, where's that go? Uh, I guess it goes back to the train tracks, so I don't care. Okay. Looks nice once you get the snow and the blizzard and everything. I mean, if you get too close, yeah, of course, yeah, it looks janky, of course, but I mean... 2015, looks, this looks pretty good for 2015, I'd say. I have no equipment. Oh, I can zoom. That's all I can do right now. I can just zoom. Okay, let's see what kind of horror game this is. What if I go just off the beaten path a little bit? Something horizontal over here tree or something? Oh, a pipeline of some sort. Which you can't walk over, but it looks like the train tracks are over there too. Okay. So this seems to be a much more uh, open world, um, or larger, you know, linear world uh, walking sim than other ones I've, I remember playing. Hmm, maybe not. Yeah, I'm getting funneled back. Okay. Yeah, I'm getting funneled back. Okay, down a tree. Probably can't walk through it. Oh, boy. Th this is an ominous here. All these dead over... Yep. Okay. Oh. Alright. And there's... Okay, well, where did these footprints come from? Oh. Now they okay, all right. Are you coming to me? 
Okay. Bit of a frame drop there, and someone asking if I'm coming to them, so that's worrying. Wait, am I leaving footprints of my own? Oh, I am. They're just not precise. Okay, so that's cool. You are leaving some of your own footprints. So I guess if you needed to find your way back. Remember when I said this was an open world, uh, not so uh, linear? Yeah, I think I lied. Okay. All right. Okay, so... Maybe we'll go back outside later, but I thought we were going to be really, you know, impressed by the giant, you know, majesty of walking around on a mountain in the blizzard with apparently no need for... Oh. That. Yeah, okay. Okay. That was not good. In the end, the only thing I saw was a flash. An insufferable burning light. The pain ripping apart my body. I felt it tearing out of my soul. After a while, I was nobody. Nothing. The light went out and I vanished into overwhelming darkness. I welcomed the end with delight. There's a little something here on the ground. Of course, I was just in town, or just outside of town. Okay, so I got footprints. How long do these last? Who knows? Oh gosh, it's getting so much brighter. I guess go toward the light, to what is brighter, and this way things are getting brighter, so. Jesus, it's blindingly white. I mean, yes, this is what it would be to be like in a snowstorm, most likely. Although I'd be a lot colder than I am right now. What is that? What is that like chiming? Oh! Some light light. What is this? Oh! Okay, so they... Alright, so a little fantasy or a supernatural element where I somehow got to their tent already. Let's see what we got. Press E. Okay, so this is where I get my map and my compass and everything. Bit of a weird intro there. I, I to, to me, they could have just kind of done an int intro of like, oh, you're one of the last surviving hikers or whatever the hell. Not that you left an abandoned town and fell out of a, fell into a hole and woke up on the mountain. Oh, there's Act 1, this is Act 2. Have you tried to hold on to your humanity? When others convince you of being no more than a subject, an object, which they can bend to their will. When they told you that you were a monster that deserved punishment. When you could really not remember your sins. When they took away your loved ones, leaving you to rot in the dark. The problem is, that in their darkness, you have never been alone. Okay. Definitely, definitely leaning into the fantasy supernatural here. Because I was in an open field earlier and now I am not at all. Can't go back to sleep. Okay. Numero uno, let's check out the back way. Oh. Press F. Okay, so a flashlight. Got my flashlight. Got my compass. Okay. All right. And uh, map. Okay. So I do show up. Oh man. Oh no, I don't show up. This is just the camp. All right. But I do have coordinates, which is nice. I wonder. So. Yeah. Oh, okay. So from the start, you get coordinates. So 37, 96. Do 
37, 37, 96. What's over here at 96? Okay, something up here on this, probably a hilltop. Okay. So this is massive for a walking simulator, possibly. All right. 752. 752 should be over here somewhere, right? Okay, so ton of coordinates, it looks like, in on this map. And uh, zoom instructions, of course, right on the map. All right. I'm going to go map free for a little bit while I survey the surrounding. Now that, that's just... It's probably just Sauron. I'm sure it's just Sauron. You know, after, you know, he lost Mordor and all that, he probably wanted a chill place to hang out for a while. Okay, so this is probably... Okay. Hmm. See, there's trails and such. And maybe these are cave entrances and these trails... I, I don't know. I honestly don't know. But it seems like there's some marked trails on here, but I wonder how much of those trails are just... Y either you, you can't, you know, you get to the end of it, it's like, oh, well, you're at the end of it. Like this, this right here. Where's this go? This just go right here to the edge? Walking simulators, man, when they give you a map, you really gotta use it. Oh. Okay. Now this is a good walking simulator. You got me interested in everything so far. There's a bright light over there that looked like Sauron chilling in the air, and then there's what seems to be a glowing mountain top that's fractured. Okay, man. Well, it's, it looks real close. It's probably, yeah, it's, it's, it's probably not close at all. Probably all the cool stuff I wanna check out is not close. All right, game, let's play your game and let's go uh, in the direction you kinda led me with those footprints and that glowing figure in the distance. And flashlight, okay, flashlight. All right. I guess it's period correct for the time era, you know. But of course I hate these kind of flashlights. And it looks like my range is like what? Okay, so about there, maybe a little bit more. All right, so nice realistic wide flashlight, nice to see. I don't think I have a battery on it, so I'm just gonna leave it on, you know, why not? This is where the figure was standing, right? Up on this pillar. Oh, that's not... Okay, well, that's something interesting I can check out. Okay. So we got some carvings and some symbols that I can't read. Okay. Alright. I can't read any of your carvings. You seem interested. Okay. I thought there was something in the sky specifically. I guess it's just a uh, cloud. Yeah, it's just Sauron. Or I'll get over there and it's some mining, you know, setup or, you know, radio tower. Who knows? Okay, creepy red smoldering dirt up here. If I turn my flashlight off, they won't be able to... Okay. Stone ice pillar things here. Great, great. Yeah, I don't know how much horror this is. It's gonna kill. Okay, so markings on the ground. Okay. Oh, it's just a meteorite or something. Still smoldering, but a meteorite with weird symbols on the ground. Okay. What do we got? A letter? I set out the moment I heard about the incident. I was in the area, so reported to the unit myself to be automatically assigned to the case. I arrived at Vishai on February the 19th, a couple of days before the Institute's rescue group. While waiting for them, I started asking around to see if anyone from among the locals knew anything about the incident. One of them said he had a hunting cabin in the search region and knew the area very well. I decided to use him as a guide. When the rescue team had finally arrived, I explained to them what the unit's role was in this mission and that all discoveries or observations should be brought to my attention before anyone else's. We established priorities, checked the equipment and set off right away. 
It was not until February the 26th we found the tent that I believe belonged to the students. Initial findings show that the people in the tent cut its side wall and for some reason tried to escape from it in panic. The tracks in the snow led to a forest a kilometer and a half away. But the trail went cold after 500 meters and we had to carefully search the entire area. This was not a place of any average incident. We had shivers crawling all over our bodies because of the atmosphere surrounding us. I was convinced that something more than just an accident had occurred here. I had the feeling we were dealing with something unnatural. Okay, so nice. We have voice acting on notes. Uh, I don't know if it's all notes, of course, but so far it seems to be uh, important. Okay, so nothing in diary yet. Reports, nothing. Articles, nothing. And survival. Okay. I can run, but running in deep snow is tiring. Adjust the pace to the surrounding conditions so you don't exhaust your organism. <laughs> Not your body, your organism. So, we're an organism at the very least. Before setting off for a longer journey, rest in camp and set a goal for a safe route. You can focus right mouse button on any object to take a better look at it. Lighting your way with the flashlight, you become more visible. So, well, I mean, so far there's been no enemies that I've seen, but, you know, there has been footprints in that bright light, lighted individual earlier, and they might be an enemy. Observe the environment carefully for better navigation with help of the map and compass, of course. Barely accessible rocky notches may lead to interesting places and shortcuts. To gain access to them, you will sometimes have to squeeze through left control. Okay, so that seems pretty simple. Let's get the journal out of here. Oh boy, let's turn the flashlight off. And. Uh, okay, this is. not creepy. Shoot. <laughs> okay, so we died. So you can die in game. Alright, let's see what happens when you respawn. Okay, so let's just run. Let's just run out of here. Let's just get out real quick. Let's just get out of here before things go south. I should be good, right? Okay. So the... Oh, who's that? Who's that? Who's that? Okay. Okay. I'm starting to think that the glowing object individuals are not enemies, but maybe the tracks or my knowledge of where these individuals went. So one of them went into here. So let's go there, but first let's check the map. Okay. Okay, so I've gone about one square in, you know, from camp to here. It's about almost one square. Okay. That's not too bad for the map. I mean, the map's how many squares? You know, we got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So about a eight by 10 grid, roughly, that you can access. That's not too bad. All right, so, I don't know. I don't know, I don't know. This is, I like how they're really taking a supernatural, really creepy, cause, cause I thought, you know, Oh no, there's gonna, just gonna be one evil creature that's trying to kill- No, it's- it's not like- I mean, so far there's no evil monsters that killed me, it's the environment, which, I mean, makes sense. Because in the real world, and natural, you know, every day, traveling on a giant frozen cold mountain, that's what kills- kills you is the environment, not the- I wonder- I wonder if you- wonder if there is stealth in this game, but that sounds like an animal of some sort. Let's hope I'm not walking right into its den. I really thought the zoom would be helpful, but it seems to be only for close range things, not far away things. All right, where am I now? Okay. All right, I know which path I'm on. So map and compass aren't too hard to figure out, especially if you're on the path uh, one of the paths that is uh, dictated on the map. That was just a color shift in the whole screen, wasn't it? Yeah, okay. So we have 
if you'll notice, kind of a green-gray hue. As I come past these rocks, we shift to a more uh, blue-white hue. So, what is that? There definitely seems to be a uh, regional color shifts. Okay, so I should be at this intersection, maybe? I'm either at the intersection or... Yeah, I gotta be at the intersection, right? Man, the sound design on this is good. Just the random creaks. I mean, I know it's hopefully trees and stuff that are just creaking, but... Oh, wow. It's a big, nice moon. Okay. So... I came out that path. Let me just, let me just, let's see if we can get to the edge of the map before I end this thing. So it should be this pathway, right? If I want to keep going straight. Well, I came from there. Unless this isn't the intersection yet. Unless this is just part of the straight on path. But let's see where this goes. I'm beginning to think this isn't the path. Unless that's what the game wants me to... No. We'll go back to the obvious path, then. It's a walking sim. They should make all the paths obvious. You know, sign markers, stacked rocks, that kind of stuff. I guess this is the bend it was telling me about, so... Areas are big enough to, you know, give you significant time... But, I mean, the game was also telling me about, you know, being worried, but also... Okay. That's glowy and something. So this is really the intersection, then, it seems, because I got one, two, three... What is this? Just be a note and not any murderous intents after I read it. Okay, so articles don't have reading. It seems just like logbook entries do. Some mysterious lights above the... Savabani Cosmodrome. Uh, mysterious events in the sky were noted. Yada, yada, yada. Okay, on the 4th and the 5th. Witnesses testified they'd seen a bright orange sphere which had crossed the sky about... above... above their city several times. Moving chaotically and immediately changing its direction of flight. Finally, it stopped and disappeared. Major Grika, an aviation professional, confirms it was impossible for a flying object we know to move like that. As I'm reading and still hearing the audio in the background, I'm starting to worry <laughs> that maybe this doesn't pause the game. Uh, yeah, no flying object that can move like that. Military and Cosmodrome's personnel answered our questions in a short and firm way by distancing themselves to the event. Okay, informing. Okay, so it seems like this was originally written not in English. All right. See, now every time I pick something up, I'm going to move away from it as quickly as possible. All right. That's the path I came out of. If that's the path I came out of, I'm now facing. Oh! Okay, so even when I get logbooks and stuff, I get stuff. So I want to go here and see what this. This thing is. I don't know. It's the only place on the map where I see lots of triangles together. Maybe it's a forest. Who knows? But we'll check it out. Yeah, there seems to be no penalty to running, other than maybe the enemy or you attracting more attention. I mean, they said your flashlight attracts attention. I don't know about running. And also, so far, my enemies have not been, uh... Okay, music. Do this shitty thing. Okay, so I guess... I guess it was a tree range. Lots of trees. Alright, uh... Let's go cave, let's go cave. Let's see what's in this cave. Okay. 69 north, 71 east. Do we already have that? 69, set, we do not. What is set 69, 71? And can I place markers? 60, 
Oh, okay, so this larger circle is our limit. So 69, 71. Yeah, 6971. So, something interesting's there. Seems okay. Huh. See, game. Once again, I have a whole logbook. I should be able to write this down somewhere. Actually, let's look. Oh, no, journal. Can I do. Let's do diary. Okay, nope. Reports. Can I add. Nope, logbook. Okay, so. If you give me a logbook in a game, I should be able to write in the logbook if it's a physical book I'm carrying with me. Okay, that's fine. It's not like I don't have pen and paper of my own. That's just fine. It's fine. 6971. Okay. <laughs> don't worry. Don't worry. I don't know. So, okay. Well, that's it. Very interesting. It's... Glowy, it's, oh, it's glowy misty chalk, okay. Now the jump scare will be leaving here. Oh no, sure it's just the wind picking up, ain't it? Just the wind, just the wind, just a wee bit of wind, all good, all good. Sure it's fine. Yeah, I'm sure that's going to be a majority of this game. It's just the creepy audio, you know, creeping up on me. Making me think I'm going to be scared or something. It's a pretty linear but open world. Nice to see. I mean, once, once you're on a path, you're kind of on that path. Come on, I can make it, right? No? Okay. They told me I would need to parkour on some rocks, and I've been known to parkour on many rocks, so why can't I? There's a note up there. It's kind of cool that you can hear the note blowing in the wind. Let me pick that up and I'll have a new map marker here. We are sitting in room number 23. Although sitting might not be the right word because we are running around trying to finish up packing anything else we could need. Uh, food cans, tools, essentially whatever we get our hands on. We want to be sure that we took everything we could possibly need. We're running out of time. Damn it, where did I put my belt? I'm sure we forgot about something. We're almost ready. We lost the knife. We're counting the money. We're leaving the room in a complete mess. So. We made it to the train station. We're singing all the songs we know and making up new ones as well. Everyone is so excited. Finally, at around 3 a.m., we go to bed. I wonder, what is awaiting us when we get there? What will we see? How far will we make it? I hear the rest of the group breathing peacefully and it's snowing outside. Okay, so diaries are diaries of the... It just got a lot darker. Like, quite a lot darker. Moon is still out. I mean, there's more clouds in front of it, but it is definitely dark. Okay, map real quick. So, oh man, we're down here. If I head south. What? Oh, tree, okay. So I essentially have two paths. Which one is which? Doesn't matter, I think. Okay. Remember last time we went into some creepy wooded area? Did not end. W ah! Somebody dug a murder hole. <laughs> they done did. Oh, no, 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 ho, 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 Oh, remember what I said last time about the creepy tree <laughs> and the monsters? It's all good. It's all good. You can't hear me run. You can't hear me run. Let's see where the other path goes. I'm sure it doesn't go directly to the same area just from... Oh, it does. It does. But there's a glowing light, and I need to see what's at the glowing light. Okay. 
another murder hole. Maybe I can get the big monster to come to a murder hole. Why don't we try that? If we see the big monster, we run toward the murder hole. What? Oh no! Okay, so evil red footprints are monster. Got it. Possibly. I wonder if I can kill them. Where, where? Are we? Okay, so we're at the note. All right, all right, all right, all right, all right. All right, so there is, I guess, strategy combat in the game. You know what? Let's just go toward the light. Nothing can stop me running, right? I just have to run past him and get to the glowing light, right? Okay, so I do run out of stamina from running at some point. If I don't look at him, I'm all good. What's my map saying? Okay. Oh, well, there's a border here. Okay, cabin in the woods, glowing light still. This is a good sign. I mean, I can't pick up any supplies or anything, but there's probably a note or something or two up here. Actually. Oh. Hmm, yeah. This is going to be the bitch of this game as you s see something. Okay, so now just every single footprints that walk directly toward me I have to avoid. Now the footprints that are walk away from me don't seem to be an issue though. Okay. So I got to Can I get up there? Oh man. Come on, why would the game tell me to go toward the light earlier and then have a glowing light and, you know, not let me get up there? Okay. Gotta be a way up here, right? Oh, gosh. Trees. Really trees. Hey, 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 game developers, if you're gonna use trees as borders, don't let you, don't, don't let us walk through them at some points and not walk through them at other points. I hear you, but I, I need to parkour. It's it's parkour time, right? Okay, no, it's not parkour time. Okay, stop this. All right. Don't worry, we're thoroughly lost by now. Well, this goes up, so. Oh. Sixty-seven seventy. Sixty-seven and seventy. Okay, well now we're just being pedantic. Cause the other one, yeah, yeah, the other one was 79, 71. Oh my gosh. Although, yeah, north and east, so, 60, okay. Whatever game. Don't know what these coordinates are, but we'll get to them, I guess. This has gotta lead up here, right? Right. This has got to go up here, right? Going up somewhere, that's for sure. Hey, I hear paper blowing in the wind. Ooh, a knife stuck to it. And we're back at a different lighted area, and it's brighter here. I like that. I like that a lot. Okay, so press E. Reports. Sivesk is a closed city in Tumsk Oblast, Russia, located at 15 kilometers, oh, 93 miles, 9.3 miles, northwest of Tomsk on the right bank of the Tom River, and is in the hands of Rosatom, the Federal Atomic Energy Agency. Founded in 1949, it was known as Party, I'm not even going to attempt it, uh, town status was granted to it in 1956. It comprises several nuclear reactors and chemical plants for separation, enrichment, and reprocessing of uranium and plutonium. The headquarters of the Russian Research Unit for Natural Phenomenon until 1991, called the Soviet Research Unit. The unit's activities concern research on occurring natural disasters. Okay, all right, all right. A little bit of lore. And where are we now, since we have that marker? Okay. 
So this, this, this is not a good area. It's unmapped. There's no trails there. I must have gotten to here. Oh gosh, yeah. Okay. Well, we're pretty far in. This seems like a nice... I, I said I was disappointed earlier by not seeing amazing vistas from on top of mountain, but... I mean, hell, there you are. An amazing vista from on top of mountain. Ignore the fact that there's lots of mysteriously dead trees and giant walking, glowing, footprinted things, but it's fine. Uh, I'm interested in this game, and I did not think a uh, walking sim would interest me at all. Seems like you're walking, but this uh, very much seems kind of in the vein of Dark Souls, where you have to find all the lore and find out what happened, and there is some very creepy, strange, paranormal, and or, you know, fantasy, and or, you know... Just strange stuff happening, so... Interesting. I Hopefully we'll get to do a full review on this later, but... Uh, yeah, I'm gonna leave it here. This has been a first impression of Colot. Uh, very good so far. Very impressed. Game's held up nice over five years. Look at that big moon. Look at that. It's impractical. The moon would not be that big. If the moon's that big, we have an issue. But, great game so far. Sounds fine. Very creepy. Um, I like, I like the death, the death thing. The note says your checkpoints. It's very nice. Yep, gonna leave it right here for now. Thank you for watching, and, uh, feel free to do the stuff. As always, I have been a formal bust. And take care of yourselves, gamers, and drink some H2O.